Welcome to Newsmax Now. I'm John Bachman. The fallout continues after the arrest of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. Assange remains in custody of British police as the DOJ pushes for his extradition to the United States. Today, dozens of people protested in the streets of Germany, calling for Chancellor Angela Merkel to grant political asylum to Assange. He was dragged out of the Ecuadorian embassy in London yesterday after Ecuador ended his seven-year asylum there. Ecuadorian President Rafael Correa called Assange a spoiled brat after he withdrew his protection, the U.S. charged Assange with conspiring with a former intelligence analyst, Chelsea Manning, to steal and publish secret government documents. But that's not the only legal trouble staring Assange in the face right now. British officials are also mounting pressure on the government to prioritize the allegations of sexual assault made against the WikiLeaks founder. Those accusations were launched after a visit Assange made to Sweden back in 2010. But since then, that investigation has gone nowhere. The new focus on those allegations could allow him to be extradited to Sweden. Let's bring in our political panel for discussion on this and much more this evening. With us tonight, Newsmax contributor and the writer of the Centrist Sentiments column on Newsmax.com. Rob Todd is here with us, also with us, former military intelligence officer and Trump 2020 advisory board member Steve Rogers. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us on this Friday evening. Great to see you both. Pleasure to be here. All right, let's get started. Former Deputy Assistant Attorney General John Yu had this response to Assange's arrest, quote, I can't think of a single individual who in the last 10, 15 years has done greater harm to American national security by himself. Steve, is that an accurate assessment of what Julian Assange has done to the U.S. intelligence community here in this country? Well, right now it is, and I could tell you that the uh, Justice Department is looking into the uh, military secrets that he tried to obtain, and that's a big deal, because when you're looking at military uh, documents and uh, secret operations of uh, your military forces, you're putting American military personnel in danger. So, yep, a lot of damage. I think that's pretty accurate. What's interesting about this story, Rob, is that the defense and the criticism of Assange kind of cuts through the normal political divide we see in this country. Uh, you know, I, w I think with, with Julian Assange, we should put things in a historical perspective. If there were no computers and you did what he did, you would have broken into somebody's office and building and gone into their files and stolen them and then carried them out. So. He, he broke the law, and for him to yeah. try to say that he's a journalist is, is ludicrous. Yeah, journalists are not allowed to break into people's offices or their computers to get their stories. There's a little thing called the food line case that people should look into, and there's others out there. All right, former Secretary of State and 2016 presidential candidate Hillary Clinton also weighed in on Assange. Here's what she had to say. You have some familiarity with the work of Mr. Assange. I, I, I do, I do. It's not about uh, punishing journalism. It's about uh, assisting the hacking of the military computer to steal uh, information from uh, the United States government. He has to answer for what he ha is, has done, at least as it's been charged. I do think it's a little ironic that he may be the only uh, foreigner that uh, this administration would welcome to the United States. <laughs> All right. So Hillary Clinton, of course, had to throw it. I wonder how much she practiced, Steve, on that joke to get it right. Because for once, I think she actually hit the timing of a joke right, which is rare for her. But in all seriousness, if Julian Assange is extradited back to the U.S., Steve, and faces trial here on these charges, what do you think an appropriate punishment would be? Well, let's talk about this for a minute. I think those words are going to come back to haunt her. She may have a lot to be concerned about because if that investigation expands, just like the Russia collusion investigation expanded, somebody might find 33,000 emails that came off a server that was scrubbed. So she's got a lot to worry about. And indeed, if he is found guilty of uh, charges regarding the military secrets, it's going to be a long, long jail sentence for him. But Steve, those emails are all about her yoga classes, right? And her, uh, you know, grandchildren, things like that. There's no, there couldn't be anything classified on there. Well, he um, may have the classified ones. Don't forget, she scrubbed that server. Remember the bleaching episode? He may yes, have those yes. uh, emails. Like you mean, like with a cloth? Like did you wipe? <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm sorry. This, uh, this is a serious topic, and I'm, I'm I'm being a little too flippant about it. But you know, it's interesting you mentioned that, Steve, because Roger Stone, who's a witness in the Mueller probe. Um, obviously involved in that investigation very intimately. He says he hopes to put Assange on the stand as a witness in his upcoming trial, I should say. Roger Stone obviously on trial. Stone expects Assange would reiterate WikiLeaks' denial 
that it was in contact with Stone in 2016 as it prepared to release hacked emails stolen from the Clinton campaign. Now, the timing of Assange's arrest did raise some eyebrows, some considered it interesting. Uh, Rob, it came just hours after Barr's spying comments. Do you think it had anything to do uh, with that? And do you think Julian Assange will be a, an important witness, as Steve indicated, moving forward? In, in relation to, to Barr? Yeah, in relation to the whole Russia investigation. Well, in relation well, to Roger well, Stone's I mean, case. I, I still don't understand why, why Barr is talking about spying when we had s something sanctioned by a judge in terms of surveillance. It's like comparing apples and oranges. And, well, and we don't I'm know what we don't know specifically what he's that, talking that, about, do we? That the highest law enforcement official in our country wouldn't know the difference between the two. I hope it wasn't a, just a, a grievous error on his part and not not something that he really intentionally thought about and planned on saying. Well, I have the answer to that if you'd like to have it. Yes. <laughs> okay. The answer is well, hold this. On, hold on one second, yep. Steve, because we're going to talk. We're going to talk about William Barr in a second. Okay. That whole thing, and we, we'll get into that. Uh, but give me a second, because I want to also talk about uh, the, the reaction to the WikiLeaks founder Assange. Some say he's a hero. Some say he's a villain. Well, we want to know what the folks at home think. So we, we want to ask you: Is Julian Assange a hero or a villain? All you have to do to participate in this poll is text us. Uh, text to 95577 right now. We'll send you a link to lock in your vote. Text one if you think Assange is a hero or two if you think he's a villain. We'll be updating you and the results throughout the entire show. We'll have those coming up for you later. I, I think there's a spying did occur. I really don't know what he's talking about. When I hear that kind of language used, it's concerning. The chief law enforcement officer of our country is going off the rails. Color me dubious that he's going to be fair unless he proves otherwise. There's no doubt they were spying on Trump's people in campaign. The question was, was it lawful? Well, he did use the spying word. I prefer the word surveillance. I'm sure they're synonyms, and if they're not, they're first cousins. All right, are we parsing words here, splitting hairs? Attorney General William Barr's prediction that spying did occur on the 2016 campaign has gotten a variety of reaction around Washington. Democrats like Nancy Pelosi say Barr went off the rails with his claim. Republicans like Lindsey Graham and others want to know exactly what kind of spying occurred and whether or not it was illegal. But Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein is also talking about this. Rosenstein defended Barr, saying, quote, he's being as forthcoming as he can. And so this notion that he's trying to mislead people, I think, is just completely bizarre. All right, Rob and Steve. Steve, we'll let you pick up where you left off there, explaining that answer that Rob asked. Go ahead. Well, to begin with, I don't believe the attorney general would even use the term spying if he didn't believe he had some evidence that will lead us down that road. But the answer to the question is, uh, look at the FISA warrants. Uh, they were uh, uh, they were approved by the courts based on lies, based on misinformation, based on inaccurate information. In my law enforcement career, I could tell you I applied for warrants. You have to be really meticulous and specific in uh, providing enough evidence to a judge to approve it. They just didn't do that. It's the FBI. That's the attitude. The chief law enforcement office of the nation. So you know what? Bingo. Let's just put a stamp on it. That's what happened. And they got caught. Yeah, and Steve, a lot of people are waiting for President Trump to declassify a lot of that information along with the FISA awards. Rob, Steve has a point. You know, these things could have been obtained, you know, in, in not the most above board fashion. And that's what William Barr and these others have promised to get to the bottom of. Oh, let's let's use the laws that we have in our country to explore that and not make a decision and use a word like spying, which is very extreme. It's just, it's really unfathomable to me at this time in, in the, the life of our country that we have a president that he, he condemns the courts, which he did today on Twitter. He's condemned the free press. He, he condemns everything that makes America great, yet he says he's going to make America great again. No, he wants to take us down the, the road to hell, I think, instead. He, he hates everything that is great Rob, about America. R Rob, Rob, what? you I'm don't honestly really believe stunned. the president is trying to take us down oh. the road to hell. Well, okay, the road to heck, if this is a PG show, but it, it, it's really wrong, John. It, it's, he's condemning everything that, that this country yeah. stands for. Yeah, and, it, and he, he think, condemns Steve, our law I think that's maybe, Rob, that might be a little bit overblown. And, you know, if you look at some of President Trump's poll numbers lately, you know, the country might disagree with you, at least 45% according to this new Gallup poll. If, if I that's was Donald Trump, I'd say rating. they were fake polls. You know what? He's condemning a process, an institutionalized process that is corrupt 
and that he's trying to get to the bottom of what's going on here. So let's stop this scenario, blame Donald Trump for all the ills of the earth. The fact of the matter is he wants to straighten this country out. The establishment doesn't like what he's doing, but he's getting it done. And by the way, I would say the overwhelming majority of people in this country support that. Well, you know, like we just showed it on the screen. We'll show it again. The new Gallup, uh, President Trump's approval numbers, according to this new Gallup poll, 45 percent, and which is up from 39 percentage points just last month in March. This is the first measure since the special counsel completed his investigation, just based on that four-page summary. You can see the poll numbers on the right direction for President Trump. Also, a Rasmussen poll that came out earlier this week also showed the president's approval number at 52 percent. So, Rob, maybe uh, President Trump's right. Maybe he won the special counsel's investigation. Well, then, then turn it over and let's, let's read the report because, again, it, you know, it just sounds fishy to me. I, I'm, I'm curious about these Gallup polls, too. It's like, who took that? The waiter at Mar-a-Lago going around from table to table? I, no, I mean, I, Rob, Gallup, Gallup is one of the most you know, prestigious polling institutions in this country. They have a very legitimate process by which they gather that information. I mean, and it's not just one poll. There are multiple polls that show President Trump's approval numbers trending in the right direction. Yeah, the same polling agency that said Hillary Clinton would win. So you like that, right? But when it comes to favorable to Donald Trump, you know well, like they, they were they were they were wrong twice then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I well, just yeah, go ahead, John. Well, you know, the, the polling, and this is a little different than these, those presidential polls, but it is important to note, you know, when you look not just at one poll, but you take a snapshot of several polls and you look at the trend line, President Trump does appear to come out of this Mueller investigation in better shape than he was a month ago. And there's the empirical evidence on the screen. All right, gentlemen, stick around. we got more to come. Rob and Steve are coming back with us. Also, we want you to stay with us. We're just getting started here. On